I want to preface everything that I'm about to say in this video by saying there's two things that I am not. I am not an engineer. I am not a lawyer. So if there's anything in this video that I get, that I get wrong, feel free to educate us in the comments down below. We could all learn something from my mistakes. Valve has run into issues before with companies suing them and it has stifled innovation in the past, in my opinion. One of my favorite controllers of all time is the Steam Controller. The Steam Controller took just about everything that we know about video game controllers, threw it out the window and did something really, really new. And a lot of people looked at this controller and they said, only one joystick, no D-pad, no thank you. This is not for me. And some would look at that and say, that's the reason that the Steam Controller failed. And maybe it is, or maybe, just hear me out, maybe it's because a company sued Valve over having these back paddles uh, on the back of the controller and they won in court. After that happened, Valve said, well, the Steam Controller didn't take off. Uh, we got sued, so let's sell off our entire stock for five bucks a piece and get rid of these things. And I think that that was, I don't, I'm not going to say it was a mistake, but it was definitely, it was bad for us as gamers because I would really had liked to see what the Steam controller would have turned into and where controllers would be now had this had it more of a chance to succeed. I mean, obviously, as we fast forward with hindsight uh, in mind, the Steam, con the Steam controller is definitely the predecessor to the Steam Deck. But why is it that the Steam Deck can have back paddles, but the Steam Controller can't? Now that's an answer for a lawyer, or that's a question for a lawyer, which I said that I'm not. What's the difference between the buttons on the back of the Steam, Steam Deck and the Steam Controller? That's a question for an engineer, which I'm not. But what I am is somebody who has a lot of video game controllers, and this is one of the best, in my opinion. And you can't get them anymore because Valve got sued. Well, Valve is getting sued again, except this time it's by the Immersion Corporation. This comes to us from PC Gamer, and I want you to note what's going on here. Um, Rich Stanton for PC Gamer, note that he's not saying that Immersion Corporation is a patent troll. The subhead here says Immersion Corporation has been described as a patent troll. That doesn't mean that we're saying that they're patent trolls. We're just saying that somebody else said that they are patent trolls. I just want to make sure that that's absolutely clear. Well, what's going on here? Essentially, they are suing Valve for infringing on seven patents that, according to Immersion Corporation, Valve has violated with the Steam Deck. Uh, and those seven things are listed right here on the screen. I'm not going to read them off to you. I'm just gonna, if you really wanna see what they are, pause it and uh, then you can read them. But they all kind of have the same focus and that has to do with touch inputs and haptics, basically. And there's a lot of touch inputs and haptics happening in the Steam Deck all the time. So is it possible that Valve is violating these patents? Absolutely. Again, not a lawyer, not an engineer, I don't know. But these patents describe basically the way that we interact with the Steam Deck on a regular basis, especially because we have the haptics that come with the, um, the, the, the track pads that are on the Steam Deck. So maybe uh, the Immersion Corporation are well within their legal rights to sue Valve. The big difference between this time and last time is last time Valve was getting sued for a product that was not successful. This time Valve is getting sued for a product that a lot of people are constantly talking about. And so Valve has a little more skin in the game in this time. Um, so what I wonder is will Valve fight this? Because Immersion has actually a pretty good track record when bringing these lawsuits against huge corporations. They ended up, uh, Microsoft ended up settling 
with the Immersion Corporation and giving them, I believe it was 10%, uh, no, no, Microsoft ended up buying 10% of Immersion in order to keep Immersion from suing them. Sony said, screw you guys, we're gonna go to the, the, to the mattresses. They took it to court, but they lost. And this has to do with the DualShock. Um, they ended up having to ship the PlayStation 3 version of the DualShock pad that didn't have any rumble in it. So what exactly is gonna happen? Well, I think that Valve's doing well enough with the Steam Deck that I don't see them closing up shop and saying, all right, I guess we're not gonna make that thing. Uh, that's what happened with the Steam Controller, but the Steam Deck has taken off. And the, the entire handheld PC gaming market is in its infancy. And Valve is right at the leading edge of that. I don't see them giving up that position. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So what would they do? Well, they've got a couple of options. They could go the road of Microsoft where they simply just pay this company and move on with their lives, or they take them to court, maybe risk having to pay more. Uh, but th like, that's a conversation for lawyers. What may happen though, and this, this part's the thing that's gonna affect you and me, is that I can see a world where Valve looks at this and uses it as a reason to raise the price of the Steam Deck. You see, when Gabe sat down with IGN back a couple of years ago when they first announced the Steam Deck, he said that price point is a painful price point. So if they are suddenly going to be paying a fee to Immersion Corporation for every Steam Deck that's sold, that's gonna make that price point even more painful. So I could see a world where Valve raises the price and this is not unprecedented. We saw the Oculus Quest 2 get a price increase. I believe in other markets, not yet in the United States, but in other markets, the price of the PS5 has increased. And I think that Microsoft has said that they're not doing that yet, but they left it open to do some other time. So we could see a price increase there. And Valve could say, listen, our closest competitor is the Asus ROG Ally. And that device at its cheapest is $200 more expensive than our cheapest version of the Steam Deck. And at its most expensive is $50 more expensive than the most expensive version of the Steam Deck. So clearly we are at the low end of the pricing range here and we should shift that pricing range up. Now, I don't think it would be a good idea for them to raise the price of the $650 unit at all. But what I could see is Valve saying, hey, the ROG Ally is $600 because of this lawsuit and inflation and all of the other things that are outside of our control, we're going to have to raise the price of the cheapest version of the Steam Deck up to $500. Still $100 cheaper than the Asus ROG Ally, but a price raise nonetheless. It's already happened in the market before and the Steam Deck uh, is currently the cheapest PC gaming handheld that you can get anywhere you look at anybody else, every other device with the exception of the ROG Ally doesn't come anywhere close because none of them have what Valve has and that is Steam as a store. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's possible that Valve uses this as an excuse to raise the price of the Steam Deck out of that more painful range? Um, or do you think that Valve is going to tough it out and say, we're gonna stick at $400 because if we raise the price, it's gonna be a whole lot of bad press for us and it's not worth the bad press because every time we sell a Steam Deck, we also sell a whole bunch of games on Steam. Let me know what you guys all think in the comments down below. And of course, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably going to enjoy this one as well. I'll see you guys on the next one. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.